Yo, what's shaking, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Orange Bloods Texas Football Channel. I'm Jeff Ketchum. That is Anwar Richardson. It's a Monday overreaction show brought to you by our good friends at the Rogue Apothecary. You can go to www.therogueshop.com. I'm sure we've got the banner just above one of our faces, both of our faces. Check it out. We love the Rogue Shop. We love Rogue Apothecary, not just because they're a fantastic sponsor and the sponsor of the Monday Overreaction Show, but we dig the product. They treat us incredibly well, first class all the way. And uh, Anwar, probably better than the football team is playing right now. We are in the aftermath of a fifth straight loss to Kansas as Steve Sarkeesian held his Monday press conference today. Like a week ago, I actually think there's a lot to unpack today from today's press conference. I actually have a big old overreaction that's perfect for today. Perfect. I think it might even be your first overreaction. But as always, because I'm a good person, you I love to, on a, on a Monday, put it on a tee and say, Anwar, take us in any direction you want to in terms of the first overreaction of the day. My first overreaction catch is that Texas is about Texas fans need to get ready for a rebuild because I think Steve Sarkeesian has outlined it today and Monday that there's a rebuild that's going to happen. I think Steve Sarkeesian has basically has said, catch that it's not the coaches who are the problem. He said these guys haven't forgotten how to coach. These guys still know essentially what they're doing, but he's basically said it's a player thing. That's why he's talking about, he already looked at it and said, hey, there's about 33 new guys that we can have, that we can have on the roster. He did the math. <laughs> he did the math. So that's a guy who's thinking of like, man, I can get rid of him. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. That be 33. 33. Let's like, it wasn't like around 20-ish or something. He said 33. Like, that's well, such there's a, a reason why he said 33. Yes. Good. Give, give us the breakdown. So the NCAA in early October, the NCAA Council, um, matter of fact, I don't know if I have the press release still up or not. I was looking at it. So what they did is everybody in college football and college athletics agrees, holy crap, there's a portal phenomena that's going on, and we need to be able to protect teams who get ambushed by the portal. But... They're super concerned about schools using the portal as such a weapon, a la uh, Mel Tucker at Michigan State, Mm -hmm. right? Like 21, 22, something like that. He's out there like, yo, man, we're we're into 20 transfers and look how well it's doing us. So there's some concern about, well, people overdosing on it. So what the NCAA council did was they they, they picked a number that they felt was somewhere in between helpful and not being overkill. And that number was 32. So what they have said is, in addition to the 25 scholarships that you can have in recruiting, your incoming number of players can be 32 if all of the transfers that enter the portal that would allow you to get to 33. So let's say you take 25. To get to 33, you would need eight, right? Or 32, you would need to get seven, excuse me. Um, You would need all seven of those transfers to be in the portal by December 15th. So Texas can't technically take 33 yet. Now, the question is, will the NCAA come back in the spring and adjust the salary cap, if you will. There's a lot of suspicion that they will, but they haven't yet. So right now they're saying that you can take 32. Texas still has one scholarship left over from last year that they didn't use for their 25-man number. So it's 32 plus the one is why he said 33. Now they can't definitely take 33 yet, but Steve Sarkeesian pretty much out out loud announced, oh yeah, in the next six weeks, we's definitely having more attrition because I'm getting my 33. AKA getting 33 of his guys, 
aka I these guys here I can't work with, so I'm going to bring in a whole new batch. And they talked about how exciting that's going to be next year to know there's going to be 33 new guys, you know, on 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 this roster. So that that tells you everything to know that you you need to know about how Steve Sarkeesian feels about these guys. He talked about catch about a groups one, two, and three, right, and where the, that kind of level of buy-in is from the from those groups and. So I, I think what we see, what we're seeing right now, and how we get here will be the that can be debated. There's a lot of people can de- debate how we got to the rebuild. Some will say, well, you know, was, some still want to blame Tom Herman. Others will say it's been a, a Steve Sarkeesian that's kind of created the rebuild more so than anything else. But the thing, no matter what, at the end of the day, Texas is going to go through a rebuild. My overreaction is Texas fans that thought, hey, this was going to be a plug and play, that this team was somehow just going to be instantly competing for a Big 12 title. What he is telling you is I, we're, this thing is torn down, debate how we got here, and, you know, and now I'm going to have to build it up with bringing in my guys. So you're a Texas fan. You're going to have to sit there and patiently wait over the next couple of years and see what happens in year, you know, year three or year four and see if he gets there. Yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot to unpack, but a couple of weeks ago you asked him about the portal and he kind of punted on the question because he was focused on in season stuff, right? Like I got a game, so I'm not really focused on team building for 2022 because I've got stuff in 2021 to do. Today felt like the official turning of the page on we're only going to talk about 2021 and all conversation about 2022 is now on, on the table. Like, and I'm cool with that. Like your column on Sunday was literally let's, let's start turning the page to 2022. I think I've echoed some of that in my columns as well, that the specific planning for how Texas gets there is paramount to how they go into next season. Like, And it will be a level of planning that, quite frankly, is different than just about any coach in the history of college football has ever gone through this idea of the number of incoming players being 33. It's a weapon. (coughs) Excuse me. It's a way for him to accelerate the ability to get better in a way that goes beyond simply recruiting the old fashioned way. And I thought he made a point in the press conference today to mention that, that in his mind, he wants, he's not a patient man. So he wants to do everything faster, which is a bit ironic because the plan is, you know, it's almost this idea that in reality, there's a long-term rebuild. Like that's the reality. Correct. And that so much so there's going to be 33 incoming people and that's a huge number and it's this amount out of 85 play. You know what I mean? Like it, it's setting the stage for not excuses, but reasons why they might not be a championship outfit next year, right? Like let's just go ahead and get fast forward 12 months from today. And one of the things that will be mentioned at some press conference in 2022 is that, well, you know, 33 players on a, on a, on a new roster, is a lot of guys that have to juggle in the in a, in a year and that like, you know, you'll kick the can down the road a little bit. He is admitting that he's not comfortable with that, but at the same time, that's the place that we are. So he hopes it will go faster. He doesn't want to use the word rebuild. And yet the words coming out of his mouth very much described kind of a rebuild. Now look real quick because we're going to have all kinds of stuff to talk about in the middle of this show. I don't even know how much we really need to dig into Kansas a whole lot, because again, there was a lot packed into this press conference, including let's play some hits real quick. B. John Robinson out for the rest of the season. Josh Thompson out for the rest of the season. Uh, Keelan Robinson expected to be back tomorrow. Like I think he's been in COVID Mm -hmm. protocol and they expect to have him back. But that's a good thing because Jonathan Brooks is week to week with a shoulder issue that Sarkeesian did not say it like this. He didn't say, he didn't use the word questionable or doubtful to describe 
Jonathan Brooks's availability for this weekend. But in labeling him week to week, I think that's doubtful in the NFL, maybe questionable, questionable at best at this point would be Jonathan Brooks. Maybe doubtful is the safer way of uh, labeling a player who would be playing in five days that they don't know whether or not his return should be listed in week or weeks. Um, So, oh, and oh, by the way, Casey Thompson is going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, you know, from, from a housekeeping standpoint, those, oh, and Jordan Whittington may return this week, which, you know, it, they've always listed his availability very vaguely. Mm-hmm. I think we felt like the safe thing to do at, mo- at best would wait till the bowl game, because then you're really giving him enough time to heal that thing up so that there are no issues whatsoever. Um, real quickly, before we go back to the other stuff, Right. We probably shouldn't also just completely forget to mention, you know, Bijan's out for the rest of the season. (laughs) Well, that, yeah, yeah. (laughs) From from a personnel standpoint, the newsy stuff from today, because we'll go back to the other things. Any reactions, overreactions, if if they exist, to the names? That's a lot of names related to availability or lack of availability. Not really, because they're not really playing for anything significant enough where it bothers me. You know, to me, if if they are in contention for a Big 12 title, then I would say yes. I mean, essentially, you're just talking about bowl eligibility and what does that even mean at that point? So, you know, maybe you're, you want the, you, you're fighting for that for the extra practices. I mean, I don't know how many of these teams are going to rally because they want extra practices. So as for me, Bijan, you know, all those guys just get healthy um for for next season and to me that's what the most important thing but no it, there's no real overreaction for me i for me any all for it, me everything's about what this looks like next year per se more so than it is but you know golly i'd beat west virginia i mean cool if you do not the, not not and not the end of the world if it doesn't happen yeah i think we, and i think we all expected the Bijan news i mean he yeah. said it and confirmed it but he, Bijan walks off the field, and I think everybody knew yeah. that's it for the rest of the season. So, you know, it's not like breaking news. You know, it's not pinned at the top. I think everybody got it. Correct. Uh, I think the most biggest overreaction that I have is that if, if, if Jordan Whittington can play this weekend, and, you know, I think about how NFL players sometimes return when they come back off of injury. And when they come back, I've had Julio Jones all year. <laughs> oh, gosh. He's been dealing with a hamstring injury. And, yeah. like, he plays, but he can't play play. So I kind of wonder that with Jordan Whittington. Like, is he back where previously he was playing 100% of the snaps, essentially, on mm-hmm. offense? Or does he come back and he's on a bit of a pitch count? And maybe he plays 25 snaps because, you know, he's, he's been out for a while. If I know the answer to that question really and truly, like that makes me wonder for the last two games, how much better the passing game can be upon his return. Because we know that since he's been gone, the passing game up until Saturday, really, when Look, Casey Thompson played really well, all things considered. I mean, six touchdown passes. You got to give him a little bit of love. Man Um, for one as well. (laughs) I mean, mean, seven seven touchdowns by one guy. Some people call that Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week type material. Um, So, you know, I think that if Jordan Whittington comes back and now they've got Xavier Worthy, who I've gone from saying they got to do whatever they can to get him the ball, like, as many times as possible to coming out of Saturday going, okay, 23 targets is a bit much. (laughs) He's he's, he's the Deontay Foreman of receivers. (laughs) He wasn't hundred percent. Like there were multiple times in the game when I thought we had seen the last play of the game for Xavier worthy, because he just looked like he was limping off. Like it could have been a hamstring or growing. Like I couldn't ever completely tell, but he was constantly laboring but he just kept going out there and balling. Uh, and as now, look, just real quick, Xavier's two touchdowns away 
from the school record for touchdown receptions in a season, regardless of classification. Like that's pretty dope. Like if he is assuming he's good, he's going to break that record. <laughs> oh, I mean, is. he's, he's, he's next world. Catch, I, I put this in my column uh, on Sunday for some, for those who, who missed it. By the way, if you didn't get the Deontay Foreman reference, Deontay Foreman rushed for 50, carried 50 times versus Kansas in that loss. So there was like an interesting parallel. Catch, if you are Steve Zarkeesian and you're, yeah, you're going to go through some overhaul this, this offseason and you want the transfer portal to work for you, the one thing you got to do is make sure it doesn't work against you. And what I got to do with that guy, and I, I want to say, look, we're getting you the ball. You're going to be the guy here. And just so you know, I know as a freshman, you want to do stat chase, and that's great. We're going to do everything we can to make sure you win going forward. And I want to make sure you stay on board with us. You're my guy. I'm letting you know you are my guy, but we're also are going to win. You, X going to give it to you, right? And make sure you guys are good. And I just, that's just one thing. I just, you just make sure you sound, I don't think you can never catch in this day and age of young people, never take anything for granted. And they'll do every, oh, that on that. Don't, don't just, just do your due diligence and make sure that guy's happy. With a bunch of five-star prospects in the stands on Saturday night, Sarkeesian was screaming, we will use our best recruits. Like Mm -hmm. 23 targets for Xavier Worthy was screaming at Devin Campbell. Dude, you'll play every snap. So, you Mm -hmm. know, you'll play every snap. Okay. So we got, we paid the bills essentially with injuries and that kind of stuff. Let's go back to the big picture conversation of overreactions because I have an even bigger overreaction than your overreaction. And I think I've got the biggest overreaction of the day. Hit me. The starting quarterback of the 2022 Texas Longhorns is not currently on this roster. And oh, that is a that's an interesting overreaction. And let me tell you why. So, and it's all because of you. You were such a troublemaker today. You used the word benched. He didn't like that. It was, it was, I, I, I used the wrong word. I did apologize. I said, I didn't mean to use the word bench. And he did, he did explain it um, previously that there was going to be part of it. And I had that in my column on Sunday as well. And I, I, I knew that, but I just used the wrong, I, I used the wrong term. I didn't mean to say bench. Yeah, but you know what? Like he admittedly, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to quibble with you by taking your side that you don't even know that I'm going to. He quibbled with you over the word choice, but he admits that the plan was to play Hudson card for a series. The moment that he decides in the middle of the game, that Hudson cards just going to stay in the game for three consecutive series. Bench Casey Thompson. Like that's the people that don't want to use the word benched in that situation. Just have a, like they've just got an ugly like they view that word negatively mm-hmm. like oh it, call it something other than bench <laughs> fine <laughs> replaced mm-hmm. is that okay for you oh yeah no you can say replaced just don't say benched they're just quibbling over words the facts of the matter is that casey thompson basically missed the entire second quarter and that was not planned so yeah whatever but the second half of your question hasn't received any attention at all. Matter of fact, I just posted this on Orange Bloods. We're recording our Monday overreaction show slightly later than normal, but it gave me an opportunity to kind of put these, put my thoughts together on this. I actually mm-hmm. posted this over on orangebloods.com. Your next part of the question I thought was really interesting. You said, what does Casey need to do to be the, your word was undeniable guy mm-hmm. at the quarterback position. And you mentioned he threw for six touchdowns. He ran for another, like played pretty well. Lead, and leads the big 12 in touchdown passes. Yes, you said that. Yeah. And then Sark says, Casey's going to be the starter for the upcoming week. What happened next, I thought was 
wildly revealing, even if I'm overreacting, even if Steve Sarkeesian didn't mean it exactly the way I'm about to frame it, okay? What he then said, and I've typed it all out. I have the entire thing that I can read. Quote, he's a microcosm of the entire roster, period. Which, for the record, full stop, that does not sound like a compliment <laughs> yeah. for a four and six football team. He's a microcosm of the entire roster. It's about consistency. And it's about playing with consistent consistency at whatever our role is on our football team for any player. And I think ultimately for us as a team, the one thing I want to get done here in the final two games is I want to see us play a complete football game in all three phases. Now, look, he's moved on to talking about the entire team, but he's talking about, but he went from Casey to comparing Casey to the team. And now he's talking about his issues with the team, but he's essentially saying when he says consistency is an issue, I think we get it. He's talking about Casey Thompson as well. This is important because he goes on to say, um, I want us to play a consistent game in all three phases. I look back to the Iowa State game, and I thought our defense played really well in the first half of the game. Unfortunately, we did not play great offensive football, and we only had a 7-3 to three lead when potentially we could have had a 17-3 to three lead and could have had changed the complexion of that game. Then the second half comes, and they hit the two big plays, and away we go. This Saturday, obviously, we move the ball well, and then the turnovers occur, and we don't play great defense this Saturday. At what point are we going to put all three phases together and play a complete game of football with consistency across the board. That was his answer to what does Casey Thompson need to do to be the undeniable guy at quarterback? And he screamed it out loud, play better, more consistently. The issue that I have, and this is why I may be overreacting, there are two meaningless games to go. He currently views, in his own words, Casey Thompson the exact same way that he views the entire roster, inconsistent. When he goes into next season, you know, I've had this, I've said this about Hudson. It's going to be hard for Sark to trust Hudson ever again, that he's going to put his livelihood on naming Hudson Card as the starter. He did that once and like blew up big time in his face. Casey looked like the guy that was going to fix that. But as we get to the end of the season, he just told us Casey is a microcosm of a four and six football team. So when Sark goes into the off season and he's got a plan for what the hell am I going to do in season two to make sure whatever the final record for this team ends up being, that never happens again. I'm only saying blinking lights were flashing in front of me that Casey Thompson finds himself in the inconsistency pile. And that when Sark is looking to who he's going to depend on for his career next season, is he going to do it with a guy that he currently views as a microcosm for four and 16? Maybe, maybe. But you asked him a vote of confidence question. He gave us a vote of confidence answer. It was just a pile of week. words. <laughs> for one week, though. Yes. He only gave him a vote of confidence for Saturday. Well, and I'm saying his vote of confidence was a no vote of confidence. Correct. He could have turned around and said, look, there's some things you got to understand about Casey. He's the third highest efficiently like rated quarterback in the Big 12. He's had more touchdown, as you said, more touchdown passes than anybody in the Big 12. His quarterback efficiency rating is almost 10 points higher than NFL backup quarterback Sam Ellinger from a year ago in the same number of games. Sam played 10. Casey's played 10. So apples to apples for the most part. 
Mm -hmm. And the the only apples being Casey got to play Kansas. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But Sam got to play Kansas State. So it's kind of a wash. Yeah. And at this point, you know, Casey Thompson had to play a half against Arkansas. And most of what uh, Sam did was just in Big 12 play alone. They had the one non-conference game. But in totality, it's apples to apples at this point. He could have really done a sales job on Casey for next season. And it didn't happen. And it's, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen. I'm not definitely, I'm not saying Casey Thompson won't be the starting quarterback next season, but the answer read like a guy who's already recruiting another quarterback Mm -hmm. to come in and be the, I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's Quinn Ewers. I don't know if it's somebody at Alabama, like Jalen Milrow, or, you know what I mean? I don't know who it is, but he spoke like a guy that will be looking for an answer to the quarterback problem that isn't inconsistent. So you and I, I think you and I agree on a premise, but we might be two ships to pass on tonight because I agree with what you're saying, but I view it differently. Okay. I, I view it. I view it that the starting quarterback that Sarkeesian wants is on the roster. That starting quarterback is Hudson Card. You think so? I think that's who he wants to start. I think that if you talk about what overreaction, that's what let, let's go. Wow. Let's go. Okay. So here's let's go to this. Okay. okay. When Sam Ellinger beat out Shane Bouchelle in year two, correct? Yes. Was there any question in your mind who the starting quarterback was come hell or high water? No, because we knew that Sam was Tom's guy. And we knew that that so we, he had the endorsement. That's my guy. This is my quarterback. Casey Thompson was the number one quarterback in this in the winter. He was the number one quarterback in the spring, the number one quarterback in the summer, and then the number one quarterback in training camp. We got reports from the scrimmages. And we didn't hear that Hudson Card was just blowing it away, right? We never heard that. We heard that, for the most part, both quarterbacks were a little bit shaky at times. But he went with his gut, which was he told his gut told him, Hudson Card practices better, and I'm going to go with Hudson. And what we've seen multiple times in this season, even when we've seen Hudson struggle, we saw Hudson struggle against Arkansas. We thought to ourselves, okay, well, that's, that's got to be a wrap. You know, just go ahead and let him learn and develop. And we've seen Hudson come back in to the point where we've recently have heard him kind of, be- yeah, you know, both guys are going to play. Catch. What starter, catch, catch, what starter do you feel like they, no matter what happens, no matter what you do, I am yanking you after the second series. Now, maybe that's designed to keep Hudson happy. Because maybe he's concerned about Hudson going into the transfer portal. I think that's exactly what that was. But what but, but what you're not doing is going 10 toes in on anybody particular. You're really worried about losing Hudson as, as it is. And catch, when a guy comes off and he – seven touchdowns in a game and you still can't put – Something, you know, your badge on him, you still can't co-sign for him. You still can't say that's the guy. You still say that's a microcosm of the team. The same guy that was breaking records when you, they were playing OU. And you still can't say, yeah, I don't really know about that guy. He's, I mean, I was good. He'll start against West Virginia. But when you look at our team, he's not a microcosm of the of this team. He, he's definitely in the microcosm of the defense. <laughs> the entire team ranked number one or number three at their positions in the big 12, just right from a, from an, like a metrics, like pick whatever metric you want, but yes. like, those are good ones. Those are good. So if you're saying they were top three in every category, that would be pretty good. But the fact that he, he won't do that. And the fact that no matter what Casey but does, do you think he, that's because he's in love with Hudson. I, I think, I think he, I think he believes in Hudson, because if he was, if he believed in Casey, 
If he just if he believed in Casey and, and what Casey's ability was, he catch when you hold on, hold on, hold on. When you've hired you've hired me, right? <laughs> and by and after a while, you you were saying, you know what? I mean, will you believe in Onwar? You you were like, look, Onwar is kind of a microcosm of this. You're like, no, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy well, no look we both agree he didn't give casey no any any love today that was not love no, that's the only thing we just we, we're not sure of is if he's looking for someone on the outside or he's looking for someone on the inside we, we do disagree agree on that we agree yes we just agree he ain't, he ain't giving casey no letter of support but we just don't know if it's outside and i think and my my belief is Maybe he just believes a little bit more in Hudson than he does in Casey. And then, you know, just look, it's when clear, I cover the look, Bucks. He pretty much threw Casey under the bus for the Iowa State game today. Like, he didn't do He didn't officially do it. But in a question directed about Casey, he pointed specifically to the Iowa State game and said, look, our defense played well. And our offense shit the bed. That's not what he said. That's what he said. And, and, he said, what he, and what he's not saying is, hey, you know, Casey has been playing with a hand injury that's been pretty hurt. You know, he's been he's hurt. Like never once said that. He's not giving the guy that an out. You and know that that would explain did. it. He and didn't I say Casey, it today. No, and I asked Casey about it today, and he's told me like, hey, he's not at one. I'm not at one hundred percent. He goes, and, you know, he's like, I felt good that I was able to actually grip the ball a little bit better in this game. But he could he could easily say. You know, since OU, this guy has had like some real severe damage in his hands and it's been really tough on him. If he wants to go ahead and back him, All right, well, he ain't look, backing him. Look, he ain't backing him. So here's the bottom line for me, because I want to address whatever elephants are in the room. And like you and I are having a conversation and part of it is about 2022. And I think, I think my interpretation of Casey Thompson and let's say his support system, his dad, his family, his whoever, right? Like, I mean, every player has a support system. I, and, and after this season, they're going to get together and be like, yo, let's talk about what, where we are. I think Casey would like to hear you're our starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. And this, this, we're going to move forward. Like we expect Casey to be even better a year from now. Like, I think that's, what you'd like to have heard, we got one of the best quarterbacks in the Big 12, and we think he's going to get better next year. Bingo. Instead, if you're Casey, what you heard today is my coach views me as inconsistent and kind of in a pile of players. I mean, I don't know what number he is, one, two, or three, but I'm telling you, he's a microcosm of the entire roster. That is so insulting. I, I know he didn't mean for it to be, but you just outlined it. If I'd done that to you <laughs> and like, you know, oh. what, the, what the hell did you just say? I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a microcosm of some of the, 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 uh, the troubles that we have here at orange bloods. So I'm like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> that was your, so, that, 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 and, and especially, and especially, and again, I know they lost the game. So, but it's, if after he's responsible for seven touchdowns in the game, hey, this, this is some Al Bundy is, look, shit right here, you know? Casey, some poke eye. Casey will not get anything more than a you have to compete with whoever is on the roster to win the job next year to be the starting quarterback. My opinion. I don't think that's going to be good enough for Casey. I don't think that's going to be good enough for Hudson. I don't think so. So here's the deal. And then this is where Sark, uh, you, you may not like it, but if you, you're going to probably lose one, he's going to have to pick the guy that he wants and say, you're the guy. Because if you, you none, catch, none of these guys have the motivation to do this again. None of these guys have the motivation to run it back. They do not. I, because I can see it from both of their perspectives. If you're Casey, you say, I'm doing everything I can. I, all the summer workouts to organize. I'm flying guys down to Miami to work out and 
all these other type of things. I'm texting all that. And then all of a sudden I, you know, I'm getting yanked or I got the, I'm getting the love where they still worried about this other guy who's behind me. And if you're, if, and if you are Kate uh, Hudson, I can see him saying, you got, I'm not getting a shot. I'm not getting a chance to play through it. You know, yeah, I threw a pick six and then I didn't get a chance to come back in. You know, and all those, I can see both sides and I can see both sides saying, I'm not doing this. So he's going, as much as Sarkeesian is trying his best to do a balancing act to say, I want to keep both. I think it's unrealistic. Oh, it I is. think it's unrealistic. I think but. he's got to go ten, toe, t- 10 toes down with somebody and say, I got to let the chips fall when they may. But you can't go 10 toes when you've got an arm in the portal. So he's going to go seven toes. And the question is, and maybe even five, the question is, which of these guys is more likely to accept a five toes offer? And I would say, no way on Casey. No, no, zero. Because he's an older guy. Yeah. Hudson's still young, and he just got admitted into the Texas Business School. He is, for reasons that are different than Casey, just in a slightly different box. And I wonder, I wonder if, if Hudson would be more prone to say, okay, go get somebody in the portal. I'll have a bunch of advantages. I'm super talented, but I'm your guy of the two. I'm your starter in the spring, right? Yeah. I think you may be, I think at that point, it's more likely that Hudson would be that guy. I just, again, it's, it it feels like an overreaction because I don't look, Casey deserves to be the starter right now, but I can't, it's the comment of Casey's a microcosm of the entire roster. And then to explain in painful detail exactly what he meant by that comment. And it was not a compliment. He, and he speci- look, he's specifically saying we lost that Iowa State game because of our offense. And the only dude on the team that really is having that blame kind of placed on him is Casey. Nobody's saying, well, Bijan's got to do better or Xavier's got to do better. We could all, we, the offensive line, we know, like, it doesn't even have to be said. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so curious to see what happens from here because it's not impossible to think that Casey will finish the year with the most touchdown passes in the big 12. He's got a significant lead so far. Catch. Let me, look, let me look, look it up real quick. He will um, be an incredibly popular to- player. If he were to enter, both guys will have tons of suitors in the portal. Who Quinn Ewers is the only guy I think Texas could get in the portal. That's that is arguably better and he, he's never played a college snap either. He is Hudson Card before Hudson Card played a game this season. So I don't know. I'm, I, there's just there's no way in my mind Sarkeesian doesn't go to the portal for help. It's about what can he get out of the portal. There are some guys that won't come in the portal unless they have an unofficial handshake. I ain't fighting for the job either. Casey has thrown 23 touchdowns. Jerry Bohannon has thrown 16 touchdowns. Is that number two? That's number two. Okay, so he's going to finish the year yeah. with the most big touchdowns in the Big 12. He's got like a seven-touchdown lead so far. And, and look, it's an arbitrary stat. I suppose it's like home runs. It only tells some part of the story. But... You know, it is, it's just an interesting dynamic for all of the things that we're talking about, because I think you and I both agree. I I can't believe that he said Casey was a microcosm of the entire roster. Just feels a little unfair because they only scored 56 points in a loss because Casey Thompson accounted for seven touchdowns. I mean, there was no, there was no, 
real conversation today at all about the fact that 57 was allowed against Kansas. By the way, those are those are seven touchdowns in three quarters. Make sure you add that in. <laughs> and they were all needed. It wasn't like, you know, the Cowboys were up 36 to nothing or whatever at halftime. So whatever Correct. any of those dudes got in the third quarter felt like Correct. garbage. I mean, they were needed to stay in the games. And look. Correct. Yes. And, and, and that's and look, what the defense was definitely a problem. But, but it's the first time Casey's really played really well in five weeks. So I don't disagree. I'm, I'm on the same page as Sark about Casey in the sense that at his best, he's best quarterback in the Big 12 at his best. No offense to Caleb Williams, who maybe Lincoln Riley doesn't want to use the word benched. Maybe he also was replaced by Spencer mm-hmm. Rattler on Saturday. But, like, it happens, right? Like, even guys who are top three Heisman candidates into week 10 of the season can, can get replaced. Um, but, boy, I just didn't think it was fair to point at Casey and to specifically say of all the players on the team that we could talk about, Casey's the guy that's the microcosm of the roster. Cause the dudes that I would say are the microcosm of the roster are different players. I, personally, I can't lump Casey Thompson, even with Hudson card. Like, Hudson Card is a microcosm of the entire roster. I can't say that he and Casey Thompson belong in the same sentence, and I am the president of the Hudson Card fan club. So, you know, all I'm saying, like, if I was Charles Thompson and I saw that press conference, my blood pressure would have gone up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I would have been like, no matter what meds I would have taken that, it would have been like one of those cartoons when you can see the actual person's body change colors. That would have been me. So, you know, like I said, it it ultimately comes down to does Sark know something that we don't know? When he answers that question, does he know what's behind door number three in a way where we don't? And because if that's the case, you know, he, he's six moves ahead of us. We're, we're reacting to this comment. And what he's reacting to is, I got my next girlfriend already lined up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But if he doesn't, and he's just kind of saying that, because in general, they'll be in the market for a quarterback. But it's an undefined quarterback at this point. God, you don't know if that dude's better than Casey Thompson. So, you know, it's interesting that he wouldn't go out of his way to say Casey's had a really good season and he's not the reason we're four and six. And that didn't happen. And in reality, I guess it hasn't happened at all because that kind of endorsement would only really be needed now that the season's gone sideways. And Mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks, we've had both guys are going to play and Casey will start this week. He did not say whether or not Hudson Card would play this week. I don't think. No, he didn't. He did not. So, but I guess it's a question we have to ask on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday we'll ask. But it's interesting to catch. We've gone from him explaining a few weeks ago why Casey needed to start, right? Play every down. Yeah, and, and all that to, well, you know, you know, the, these other type of things where you're like, that's, a, that's an interesting shift. But catch, if I'm either one of these quarterbacks, Hudson, Casey, and, you know, here's my, here's my question, and this will be my question to Sarkeesian. Hey, coach, in order for me to stick around in 2022, what you going to do with this offensive line? Right. What? <laughs> that that would be my out. Yeah. Okay. You want to evaluate my performance? That's fine. I, I you sit down, evaluate my performance. Tell me how I can get better. 
Coach, you want to know why I'm a little jittery in the pocket? Because I'm getting my head taken off. I mean, like, this this is hey, happening. Can I ask you a question? What? All right, let's say the season ends and Texas is 6-6. Six and six. Just bear with me here, okay? okay? I just want to have an answer to the question. And I'm 4-8 and eight sounds ugly. There's going to be some illegal contact going on in the portal. I mean, it's just going to happen. If I needed a quarterback and I thought Casey Thompson was available and there was no doubt in my mind that Casey Thompson's the best option I would have at whatever school, right? I would be illegally contacting. I, I, whatever okay. I got to do to reach Charles Thompson, I'd do that. They'd know. My question is, at six and six with, let's just call it a soft endorsement. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. With nothing more than kind of a soft endorsement at this point. If you're Casey and schools are reaching out to you behind the scenes in first week of January, what level of team slash program would need to come at you in order for you to cash in your chips and to go someplace else? Would it have to be, you know, cause I feel like we, we, <clears throat> Marquez Bimage said no because Cal came knocking. But I don't know that Casey Thompson's leaving for Cal. But what if USC or North Carolina or I don't know, like I'm 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 trying to think of a mid -tier, mid tier program in actual I mean what would it take? What does it take a team that is on the cusp of a championship or is a top 25 level team enough for a guy who's on a six and six program with a soft endorsement? This is the tough part to that question. The, the, this is the, this was makes this tough. And I wrote it down since Casey has been here, his offensive coordinators have been Tim Beck, Tom Herman, Mike Yursich, Steve Sarkeesian. For him to leave means he now has to go to his fifth OC. Oh, that sounds awful. In his college career. That is awful. Think about that. That would be five OCs in a college career. Tim and you didn't even say AJ Milley, who's technically yeah. his position coach. So, right. you know, like that's just another dude that's in the mix as somebody he's dealing with. So I think if you are if you're Casey Thompson, option number one is Texas. Like they, okay, you haven't had enough opportunity to stay with one OC for multiple years. I mean, it's but you just, might not be the starter. Like I what know if USC comes and tells him you will start for us. I get it, but I think about for a guy who has NFL aspirations. Now having to then, what's what would be more beneficial? Trying to go year two in Steve Sarkeesian's system or going out to a USC and trying to see if I can make that work? So that's what I'm saying. Like, I hear what you're saying, but I think if you're Casey, I'm going to, because it's two things. I think if you're Casey, what you're trying to do is say, I hope Hudson leaves. And if Hudson leaves, I'm good. Because if, if I mean, not like I got to I got to start all over again. And what if, it, if, you know, what if I don't vibe with this guy? If not, and if, if Steve Sarkeesian comes to you and, and says, I'm going with Hudson. If, then I, if I'm Casey, I don't think you have to go like to the, to like an SMU per se. Like, I, I think that he could still stay power five and still be pretty successful. Easily. So um and it's not a knock on shane uh, you know at, at all just to, so if there's a we should, casey's we should gonna the thing. headline for whoever signs casey thompson if he were to go into the portal is school a lands big 12's number one touchdown thrower correct 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 it's it won't be like a jalen hurts kind of acquisition or a kyler murray but Hell, I'd have to check. I'd have to check some of their stats. I don't know if they accomplished as much as Casey did. Hell no! I mean, Kyler the, was a bomb at A and M. Oh, you be careful. Kyler told you not to put his his name in your mouth. Or Kyler's been on my fantasy team in the past. So 
We're at we're we're beyond. You sure? I, 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 cheered I don't want him to tweet at you again. Kid. And and cursed it at the same time. I don't want him to tweet at you again, man. I just know. Saying. I'm just saying. It, it, I don't know if that thing is. You know, Kyler doesn't like you. Baker doesn't like me. So I think it's a it's a weird thing that we've had two guys from those those programs that don't care for either one of us. But uh, he can go to any any place, and I think in most places in, in most Division One places do do well. But for a guy that's probably thinking, hey, if I I've all, if I've got two more years left, if one more year, if I can get one more year in Texas. And he t- he gets everything tight for me. Then I can go to the NFL, which is the ultimate goal. That's what I think. That's what would be their their thought process. Is it risky? Hell yeah! Because you just it is scored- after today. You scored seven touchdowns in the game, Al Bundy, and they still ain't, ain't giving you that kind of love. So is it risky potentially? But I mean, I feel like Christian Jones is a microcosm of the entire roster. See. See, uh, and I don't mean I'm not, I'm not dumb, do, saying names, catch. I'll I'll say almost every name on the roster. I don't do names. The only dudes look, why don't we do this? Who gets to separate themselves from the roster? Bijan. Bijan. Xavier. Xavier. Jordan. Yeah. Whittington. When when healthy, obviously. Yeah. DeMarvion. I don't uh, know. Uh, huh? I don't know. DeMarvion? I love DeMarvion. DeMarvion was on a defense that gave up 57, and DeMarvion ain't making big plays. I love DeMarvion. I love Demo. He's still like drafted, though. He ain't playing like Jordan or uh, Xavier or Bijan are playing. To be fair, ain't like pe- people are running to his side either. Well, no, it ain't his side that they run to every time. <laughs> Just to, to but... Be- but but I bet Demo would admit he took some bad angles on Saturday. I know I know when he went back and watched the film, he was like, "Oh shit, that wasn't good." I will still put Demarvion on my list. Okay, um, I'll allow Demarvion for the sake of that's five, right or four? Yeah, yeah. You got to let me five because I'm struggling Dicker. once to get past the five. Dicker, Dicker. Did, did I say Casey? No. Casey's on my list. Okay. Um, okay. And, and now, and now this it's okay. Now, now, right now we're like in, in round 10 of a, of a draft. No, that's what I'm saying, I said, Christian Jones and you were like, Ugh. and now I just didn't want to name him. I didn't want to name look, him. Everybody knows he's in the pile. Names. Look, Tope's in the pile. I love Jake. He's in the pile. Um, Tavondre sweats. He and Byron Murphy might sneak into the other side. Which which side are we talking about? The safe side, the non microcosm side. Okay. The views expressed on this podcast <laughs> are of Jeff Ketchum and Jeff Ketchum alone. Jeff Ketchum in the prizes, you, but they do not necessarily reflect the views of Anwar Richardson. You're not putting Tavondre in the other pile. I'm on it's positives. I'm only on positive. I'm, this is a positive. I'm putting him in the safe side. Okay, I'll put Tavondre in the safe side. I put Tavondre. This is what this is what I just did. I put Tavondre on a boat off the Titanic. He's safe. Okay. I'm saying the, the the microcosms. They're the band on the Titanic. They don't get on the boat. They just play until it goes down. I'm letting Byron Murphy have a seat on on a safe passage so that he doesn't drown in the cold waters of microcosms. Okay. So, you know, like the number... Roshan. Well, look, if we're going to put Roshan in, I'm going to put Marcus Washington in. Only because... Hey, great game. Because he blocks his ass off in every game. Yes. And you know he's got the attitude they want. They, they don't have to show up asking Marcus Washington to do anything extra. He mm-hmm. plays hard. So, and Roshan's a dog. I love, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a dog. I like him. Hell, Jonathan Brooks probably gets a seat on the Titanic boat, too. You know, what's interesting is you start counting them up, and maybe you get closer to 20, right? Mm-hmm. Start thinking about 
what do you say? They're one, twos, and threes, or A, Bs, and Cs? Yeah, yeah, one, twos, and threes, uh-huh. I wonder if it's as simple as this. All the guys that we have mentioned, and there's like, start thinking about it, maybe there's 20, right? 20 guys that, like, they don't have to worry about effort. They play hard every game. They're mostly productive. They go into the they go into the ones. Then you got your twos, and the twos might be a guy like Christian Jones only because and I don't mean because he doesn't play hard, but only because he's inconsistent. Mm-hmm. And when you and when he's specifically talking about what he wants today, in the last two games of the season, and how that goes for all three phases, there's a group of guys that I think he's saying that to that are probably twos. And you know who the threes are? Who? The guys that he's already counted in his head that get him to 33 scholarships. Correct. So your twos can still move their way into ones. The threes are out of the mix. They gone. So now you're probably set with a ones and twos roster. And it's probably safe to say that there's more twos than ones. And that what Sarkeesian was saying today is that if you're in my pile of twos and you wanted me to seriously plan for you next season, you got two games to get your ass in the ones. Otherwise, this season will end and I'm going to try to find me some more ones. And some of those ones might be at your position. If you're a one now, he's probably got bigger fish to fry than replacing you at your position. I don't know that he has Casey Tom. Well, he said it. He's got Casey in the twos, probably. <laughs> Only because he called him a microcosm of a four and six football team. That's just not a compliment. <laughs> That's a compliment when your team's nine and one. Well, you know, Casey Thompson is a microcosm of a nine and one football team. I'd be like, that's a damn compliment right there. He's saying that dude every day is top five in the country. You know, when you're, it's, it, the, the weird thing is, I wonder how far you go. Eight and two still feels like a compliment. <laughs> if your team was seven and three, I'd be like, huh. Does that mean he just thinks he's okay? He's pretty good? Four and six, there's no doubt about what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> correct. By no, the I... way, my last – this this, be, this this could be my final comment, okay? Let me see if the post is still on the board. My alter ego, alleged, if you will, CS – <laughs> Never seen you both in the one room. Nobody has. He had a post earlier today that I just want to read it out loud to you, okay? If Texas loses out, the Longhorns will finish the season four and eight and two and seven in conference play. In terms of this is the 120th season in Texas football history. At four and eight with a 0.333 winning percentage, that would rank 116th in the history of the program out of 120. He says, this is also the 107th season where Texas has been in a conference. And the 222 win, uh, winning percentage in conference would rank 102 out of 107. They don't do something to end this season faster. We're legitimately talking about one of the five worst seasons in 120 years. That's the context of he's a microcosm of the roster. Because the micro the roster currently is largely responsible for one of as it currently stands, one of the worst seasons of football this school has ever seen and legitimately worse than anything you've ever seen. 
and I've ever seen. Charlie Strong is the, the low water benchmark for awfulness. Texas is straddling that line. So, you know, when we talk, when we have this conversation, I think it's important to, to, be, to just be crystal clear about the, the context of all of this. Where Texas is currently situated is a disaster. And it's only not a disaster if you don't think one of the first five seasons, worst five seasons in 120 years is a disaster. Because people on war are hurt by words. The word benched scared people. You could have said replaced and it'd be like, oh, no, no. Same, same meaning, different, different in your feelings about it. Mm-hmm. The word disaster will scare some people. Oh my God, you can't say disaster. You, can, you can't give somebody an F on their job. That's so mean. Top five worst seasons in 120 years. I don't know if it can be mean enough. Well, the challenge, and this is the issue with the the this this season um you know when charlie had his bad season it was easy to say okay well he had a bad season he inherited max guys the guys are soft he's got to clean up this country club atmosphere and so you kind of accept that all right this is where it's going and then he had a couple of bad years and then tom comes in he said all right Got to get rid of these soft guys that are here. And Tom comes in and everyone was happy with sit the F up, the meetings catch. And everyone loved the, the burnt toast and soggy eggs and go or one of those and all these other type of things. Like everyone loved to kick the ass, right? And then to, to a certain degree, there was a little bit of success there. The problem that having this happening now and the denial that's happening here is that it is so bad. It has taken such a step back. It's to, to admit that it's <coughs> disaster, to admit that someone is benched, to admit that this thing isn't going well, to admit that this isn't really Tom Herman's problem, to throw it on someone else or to throw it on the other coaches, or to, to admit all that, to admit the truth of this is not going well and this is a real messed up situation, would be having to admit that Steve Sarkeesian is failing in year one, and nobody wants to admit that. And I know, and, and so because of that, there's a, there's this there's this sensitivity because yeah. it's almost to say that Santa is not real. And the moment you start saying Santa isn't real, they're like, no, you can't say that, kid. Santa is real, just in case you're out there. I'll go on where it's just joking with you, but it's almost like that. And so that's the that's the problem catch, and that's why people are so sensitive. And that's why people are in such pins and needles about everything because it is your one. But if you say, man, he ain't really living up to expectations. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. It, do you know the, the, the other stuff that's going on that's, that's here? Yeah. No, these are other, no, it's not that. It's not the coaches, he, these players. He, inher- he inherited Tom Herman's players. You know, come on, you gotta give them time. It's like, they lost three games by combined 13 points last year. Like, we, we have to stop well, this. And you know the biggest parallel that nobody ever mentions? Charlie Strong didn't take over a destitute program either. I mean, they went five and seven in 2010, but then they were like an eight, nine win team for the next three seasons. In the last game of Mac Brown's career before he lost his job, he was 30 minutes away from winning the Big 12, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is a little bit like saying you lost three games by a combined eight points. Like, oh, you were so close. You could taste it, but you didn't really get that close. Yeah. And when Charlie came in, the program was exactly the way Herman left it. Pretty good. The idea was pretty good's not good enough. Mm-hmm. And then Charlie came in and the whole damn thing fell apart. Now, <laughs> a lot of that had to do with they just were destitute at quarterback, right? Because they yeah. were pretty good on defense in 2014. And if Casey Thompson's playing on the 2014 Longhorns, 
they might have won nine or ten games, really. Sure. Yeah, that defense was good that year. It was really good. Yeah. Um, this year, you find, you kind of feel the same way about this team. They were pretty good a year ago, and the bottom's fallen out. And it's weird that Sarkeesian more parallels Charlie Strong than anything else. I mean, Charlie's the one that was breaking records in the worst kind of way. Sarkeesian only at this point is breaking records in the worst kind of way. And their arrivals are weirdly similar. Maybe there's something to be said about teams that are pretty good losing coaches. Cause yeah, maybe yeah. there's a weird, I don't know. I don't know. Cause maybe, maybe the thing is you take over when they're terrible and then you can either just say, we're continuing how terrible they were or anything is anything better than that is improvement. The risky thing was Sark. We talked about this in the off season. What happens if the winning percentage at the end of the year isn't as good as the one that Tom had a year ago? How would we feel about that? We didn't guess that that conversation would lead us to worse. One of the five worst seasons ever. Cause yeah. The elephant in the room, this will really be the last thing I say. You can follow this up any way you want to. If you had told, told Chris Del Conte and Kevin Eltife a year ago that replacing Tom Herman with Steve Sarkeesian would lead to a four and six record through 10 games, they would not have hired Steve Sarkeesian. They may not have kept Tom Herman, but they would not have signed, willingly signed up for four and six losing to Kansas at home, five game losing streak. They just wouldn't have. So, you know, it is, it is the thing that we just have to acknowledge with this season is where it has gone is a place that Texas didn't want to go. And you just can't, you can't play the pretend game with this kind of season and worry too much about feelings. That's it. That's all I got to say. I will say this would be my my final thing. And I hope hopefully I don't go too far off the rails with this, but I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. You know, there is something to be said about being smart and being patient, right? And we look at Michigan, right? Michigan thought about getting rid of Harbaugh at one point, but understood, okay, th- there may not be it, it's a better option that's out there. And if we get rid of him now, what we replace him with, ew, I don't know. And so Michigan decided, okay, we'll do a couple little things, contractual-wise, whatever, but we'll, we'll stay with Jim Harbaugh. And you see what's happening now with the season that they're having. And the, the hard part for me, Catch, and this is now year eight for me covering this beat, you know, there's, there's all this, we're Texas, we're Texas, we're Texas. And look, for me, I got, if you're going to go after Nick Saban, go after Nick Saban. That's right. Because you're Texas, go after the best and the brightest. Catch, you and I had complaining conversations last year. Zero issues with, with them going after Urban Meyer. Catch, you had questions about Urban Meyer as, as a person. But from a football coaching perspective, you go after the guy who's the who is a, a future Hall of Famer. Right. His wife thinks he's a horrible human being right now. Just for the record. <laughs> <Fair. laughs> I'm not, I, don't, I don't know what to touch this one. Um, Sorry. Had to say that. It just in defense of myself. But yeah. So, but you know, but if you, but if you don't get urban, then you, the, the, this thing that Texas keeps doing, which is going after guys who haven't really proven that they can do it consistently at a big time program. And that's what we saw with Charlie hadn't proved they could do it consistently with a big time program. You get rid of Tom, who was giving you good wins, and then you get to you hire someone who basically was winning seven games a year throughout the majority of his career. And so now, Coach Catch, what's the conversation now? Well, if, if Sarkeesian doesn't work out, you know, Jeff Trailer's right down the street at UTSA. I like Trailer. Good dude. Good, good man. A good dude. But if you're Texas, 
do you not just say, man, let's just go after someone who's proven if you have to go in that direction. So I, I get what's happening, but at some point, you know, Texas at this point, they're in it. They've got, they, they can't get rid of them. They put signed into a six year deal. So all they can do is hope these 33 new guys that come in end up being something that sparks it. And by the way, the trans, you know, recruiting transfer portal, transfer portal catch might be more of a coin toss than, than recruiting because yeah, the so. you don't think so. I, no, I think because it's anybody who's not a national top 75 player is at best 80% failing at best. But the majority, so, the majority of people in the transfer portal are people who can't start for their own program. The majority. No, you're now, right. But maybe they're only a 70% failure or it, I, I think it depends on who we're talking about. But if we're talking, look, Ovio Gofu is a perfect example, okay? He couldn't start at Notre Dame, but he was good enough to be a rotational player on a team good enough to make the playoff. And his risk rate, to me, is better than 80%. I don't know how good his upside is, but I think his downside of being – a success is more likely. So in most situations, you're probably right. The question is for Texas, where on the tier of good players in the portal are they going to be? Because last year they fished at Goodwill for some of their pieces. And, you know, the athletic came out with their top 100 or top 50 prospects from the portal and I know Texas didn't have anybody in the top 50. So they didn't get one guy. Even TCU and Baylor were getting players in the top 50. Texas didn't get any. And it showed. It showed. And, and consequently, when you look at Baylor and go, what about their guys? It, it shows. That, it shows that if you go get the right transfers, they can help out right away. And, you know, one of the things that Texas want to do next year, if they're going to go out and get guys they're comfortable with, they really got to make sure the guys they're comfortable with are good. And right. they went out and got a couple of defensive players that they were comfortable with because of staff comfort. And those dudes haven't helped. I mean, no offense to eat. I'm not even saying names. And the portal just hasn't given this team what it needs. And in order for this team to make improvement next year, that can't be a true sentence. All right. One, one last thing before, before we go. Just when Steve Sarkeesian said he's going to be more involved in the defense in the offseason, that, was that his endorsement of, of Kwiatkowski saying yeah. – did you, was that like kind of code that you guys can back up off that? I'm going to be more involved. The same way Tom was more involved with Tim Beck. Today was an unofficial official vote of confidence for Pete Kwiatkowski. He'll be back next year. That was what I got from that. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure you were on the same page with that. Because you probably ain't saying that if you're about to go hire Gary Patterson. Yeah. I'm going to be involved next year. On, whoa, whoa. No. What you're going to do is hire me and get the hell out out on the way. Mm. And that ain't what he said. So, yeah, t same page. Uh, okay. Look, for myself and Anwar Richardson, hey, do us a solid. Like the video. I didn't mention this earlier. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the, ring the bell. Get the notifications. Uh, and comment in the comment section today. We talked about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff to comment on. I'm curious to see what you guys want to comment the most on because we that last little bit about Kwiatkowski. <laughs> yeah. Probably shouldn't be buried. <laughs> <laughs> but I hate that the truth. It was a lot going on today in the press conference. So look, for myself and Anwar Richardson, uh, thanks for watching. We'll do this again tomorrow. Later.